All right. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to this Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this Family Bible Study Hour. We're going to do a few more um, single studies, we call them. We're going to talk about, do a little study today on watchmen. I received many questions. What am I supposed to do? I wish I could find out what God wanted me to do. Well, do you know what he told you to do? Watch. Well, what am I supposed to watch? Through his word, he gives you signs and seasons and events that you should be aware of, things that you should be watching for. And if you were a student of his word, you wouldn't have to ask that question, what does he want me to do? That's why that the studying, a study of God's word will always uh, cause you to grow in a closer walk with him because you know what it is he wants you to do. You do it, and naturally he blesses you with his love, with other blessings. You just have a better life. So, looking at it from the aspect of watchmen, you'll remember in Mark 13 and Matthew 24, he actually gave us seven signs, which are the seven seals of the book of Revelation, and said, watch for these. And naturally, when you saw them come to pass, you would even know uh, because of the uh, uh, parable of the fig tree uh, listed in verse 28 of that 13th chapter of Mark, what it was that, that the generation would be doing when these events came to pass. So with that, he also taught a parable, kind of a parable, at the end of that 13th chapter of Mark. Let's turn to it. Mark chapter 13. Let's pick it up in verse 32 and let's understand what you're supposed to watch for what it is you're supposed to do. Okay, verse 32, just following the parable of the fig tree. But of that day, speaking of the day of Christ's return, and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. In other words, you know the season you're supposed to, and you know the reason thereof, but you don't know the instant. When you put those three articles together, it simply means you don't know the instant. But you'd better know the hour and the season in which it falls. Verse 33, take ye heed. That means you be careful. Watch. There's the word. That's what a watchman is supposed to do. Watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Verse 34, for the Son of Man, here comes the parable now, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a far, far journey, who left his house and gave authority. Do you understand? Do you realize you have authority if you utilize it as is, as is given in God's Word? Of course you do. Gave authority to his servants, that is to say if you're one of his servants, and to every man his work. It's very important. Every man his work. Everyone has gifts that, that they um, can work with. It may simply be, um, let's say, visiting the sick. It may be just smiling at someone that's really down. And, or, or it may be uh, passing along seeds of truth to those that are down and so forth. Every man his work and commanded the porter to what? To watch. So watching is a very important part. Watching and waiting takes patience. Patience that it's very difficult for a human being to muster the patience necessary. But again, the more you watch in his word prayerfully, the more you become familiar with his plan, whereby as you recognize the signs of the times as they come to pass, it's like uh, feeding the patience with exactly what it needs, whereby patience is a lot easier to come by. Verse 35, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. And there you have the watches of the day. 36, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping, because we know that we are a child of the day and are never in the night, as it is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 37 to complete, 
And what I say unto you, I say unto you all, how many, not what, which part? No, all, watch. So that's the best advice he can give to you after giving the seven seals, which are the seven trumpets, which are the seven vials. Absorb them along with the other parables and things that he has told you to watch for and watch. You'll be blessed when you see them come to pass. We know the fig tree was set out in the year of our Lord, 1948, when, when the good fig returned to Jerusalem, and knowing at the same time as a watchman that the bad fig went along with them. So we have both the good fig and the bad fig. That's very scriptural, uh, Jeremiah chapter 24 that that generation would not pass away until all these scriptures were fulfilled. So that certainly puts us many years at this time into that fulfilling or rather beginning of the shoot of that fig tree being set out in Jerusalem. So there you have it. What are you supposed to do now? Sleep? No. Sleepers um, are dreamers. And that's about all they ever amount to is a bad dream or maybe a good dream occasionally. But they're just dreamers. Workmen that do God's work, that watch and watch in that work, their dreams are pleasant and secure because they know and have that peace of mind that only a worker of our Father and one in attune with Him sharing his love uh, to the Father and the Father's love back to that entity, has that peace of mind of understanding because they understand the Word of God. Now, I wish I could say that I knew and understood all there was to know about God's Word. Naturally, I would be a liar were I to say that because nobody understands all. Our Father's knowledge is so vast. As a matter of fact, when it says... Example in the New Testament that no man has ever seen God. It really should be translated, no man has ever seen all that God knows. Because many people have seen the face of God, that is to say the angel of God, which is the presence. But certainly no man has ever known or understood all that our Father knows. And the Word itself, as you study it, is pregnant. If you study this 13th chapter of Mark one year and wait a year and get back into it again, you're going to see that it has grown for you. In other words, God has building steps and benchmarks as he brings people along on different levels of understanding whereby they can be better watchmen. So actually what he's saying here is be a good watchman. No one understand that. Understand his word whereby you are that better watchman. To understand the signs that were just given, as a matter of fact, uh, the disciples ask him, what's it going to be like when you return, when these buildings are turned to sand? That is to say, not one stone standing atop another. What, where, and when? He answered it. That's the answer to the question of when he returns. All you have to do is understand those seven seals as we have covered many times. And after you understand them, you watch. Because today, prophecy, I can remember 40 years ago, being a student of the prophets, that is to say of this Father's Word, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, which they were all prophets in a sense. If it, the apostles and parables of, of Christ and parables within themselves, Isaiah, Jeremiah, being a student of those works, there would be years before a, a, a prophecy would come to pass. And today, it's like the labor pains of a woman, closer and closer and closer, until you can mark the days, for nothing is ever the same. And that has happened since the year of our Lord, 1981, that... It's never been the same, and it's never going to be again. And you can mark that. That's exactly the way it is, and that's how our Father has us racing toward that end of time, even at this time. Many things yet to come to pass. Don't misunderstand me. But how wonderful it is to be aware of them when they do come to pass. What else were you told to do 
in preparation for uh, serving him or being with him or when that time would come. We know that the spurious Messiah appears as he told us in and among those signs. And we know that we're supposed to stand against him. We know also as it is written in the book of Ephesians that we're supposed to put the gospel armor on and in place. That what is it that we're warring against or watching for? Not an enemy that we fight with the power of the arm, but an enemy of, from high places and dark sayings. That means satanic parables and the wiles of the devil. That's what you put the armor on for. But do you know something? After you put each piece of that armor on, and especially girding yourself with the Word of God, meaning absorbing that Word, there's something that's very important, and if you miss it, the armor is not going to do you a great good, a deal of good. You can have all the armor on you want to, but a soldier always knows more about fighting than putting armor on. Number one, by watching, we know that our war is against spirits and the devil in high places, meaning even supernatural angelic beings and the influence that Satan has on this world. But what is the add-on? What is it that you're supposed to know? And more important, what is it that you're supposed to do? You want to know what you're supposed to do. This is where you find out. So, with that thought in mind, this is what you do. Ephesians chapter 6, after the armor is on in place, then you find out. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit, that means to our Father, knowing it's a spiritual war we're fighting, and watching. There's that word again. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications of all saints. That's God's election, knowing from a deeper level of study and understanding the things that transpire that you're supposed to understand and stand ready to be fit for something rather than some dreamer flyaway doctrine that is not written in the Word of God. And why is it that you put the gospel armor on? To fly away? No. It's written very clearly to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. Well, you make a big target. And if you don't know how to protect yourself with that armor, instead of having the shield to protect you, you'll probably get a dart right where it might be have the most padding because you'd probably be running in the opposite direction. One of Satan's very good little darts. They're coming. So, you need to learn how to be a watchman. I think for the election, it's even more serious than one might think in as much as most of the world sleeps at this time. And a watchman is supposed, especially supposed to be alert when he is on that late night watch while others are sleeping to protect them from an enemy that might approach. Verse 19, and for me, Paul continues, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. There is no way that you can open your mouth to plant a seed or to teach God's Word unless you have absorbed it, unless you are comfortable in it, unless you have the knowledge to feel at home there. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel at home in your father's house? It's yours. I might even say, do you feel at home in your own house? Because the Word of God is your house. It's your seed line being a child of God. Are you comfortable there? If you're not, you got problems, friend. And part of it is by not using the perseverance of absorbing the simplicity in which our Father teaches prayerfully absorbing and being that watching watchman 
that watches thereunto. Watches thereunto with what? All perseverance and supplication. Are, are you familiar with the supplication? Well, let's see. I, I know there's one book. Well, have you ever heard of the book? Uh, do you ever read the book Second Ezra? Do you ever read the book Second Nebuchadnezzar? And I'm sure you haven't because there's no such thing as the second book of Nebuchadnezzar. And if you don't know the difference, you're hurting, friend. You're hurting a bunch because you don't have the supplication. And unfortunately, biblical illiteracy, and I'm not talking down to people or I'm not scolding. I'm saying it's a sad case. I can personally understand why we have such um, a vast amount of people in illiteracy concerning God's Word when it's not taught. You get a bunch of one-verse Charlies that never quite get into God's Word. It's not the people's fault that they have not taken unto themselves the blessings and peace of mind that God supplements the minds of those that follow Him and that seek Him, that seek His Word rather than the traditions of men, or that is to say, the words of men. The words of our Father are extremely important. What kind of a watchman are you? It's a pretty poor watchman that doesn't know what he's watching for. What are you doing there, watchman? Well, I don't know. They just told me to walk around out here and look, and I don't know what I'm looking for, whether it's the boogie bear or whether it's night owls. I don't know. I'm just out here. Well, quite frankly, that may be overstressing the issue and sound ridiculous, but it's not so ridiculous when you compare it to many watchmen in this hour that have no idea and what our fathers will or wish, it's very simple. Watch, but watch for those things that he has forewarned you and even has foreordained those that will watch. Think about it. Now, was that only in the New Testament? Of course not. Our father, uh, probably one of the better places, Ezekiel chapter 33, let's go there. Part of the acrostics of 11 entailed within this. Uh, another subject for a different time. But that watching, what do you do? You read from the, both the Old and the New Covenant. For there is nothing new under the sun, and our Father is the same yesterday as He is today. And let me tell you something, He will be forever. That's one thing about absorbing the Word. It isn't a waste of time. It's not like learning a new computer program and then having the whole thing changed on you in three weeks. This program is eternal. It will always be the same. Ezekiel was given to us as, if you would, a sign. In other words, those events that happened to Ezekiel are very likely, if you are a watchman, to happen to you in one form or the other of the, the prophecies that pertain to him. But what was his primary duty? The same as yours. And that's why he was our sign. Chapter 33, verse 7, let's go with it. So thou, O son of man, being Ezekiel, I have set thee a watchman. A what? a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Now, now listen just a moment. Kind of a word for ministers and watchmen both in there. Okay? How, uh, Israel, as you know, is not the house of Judah. The house of Israel and the house of Judah are two separate houses. And they are separated even at the time of this prophecy, the giving thereof. Ezekiel 37 gives you the joining back of the two houses, but they're still separate here. Where, where is Israel? Those ten tribes that went north over the Caucasus Mountains and were later called Caucasians that migrated all over the world. That's who it's talking about. But now listen carefully. They were to hear the word at what? 
well, Preacher Bob, you always listen to Preacher Bob. God will send the word through Preacher Bob. And I'm, I'm not mentioning any preacher's name or anything. It's just a name pulled out of the hat. We'll call him, rather than using Preacher Bob, let's say the re revolving reverend, okay? I mean, we got a lot of those, and nobody can say I'm talking about them, okay? We got a lot of reverends that revolve. I really have never seen a great deal to reverence them about. I personally am against reverencing man, but only our Father. Now, what is it that you, I'm talking to you as a watchman, how are you to receive the word? Listen to it. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, meaning our Father's word, from the book, the living word. Thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Warn who? Those that don't know. And so many people say, I just wish I knew what God wanted me to do. Well, you're not supposed to make a fool out of yourself, number one, and be a religious fanatic. But if a friend comes up to you and asks a question, and you claim to be a Christian, and basically at least part of his questions, if you can't answer them, then you have failed Christ, have you not? Why? You haven't studied the word or you'd know what to answer because you would have heard it from God's mouth. You know, you, it is my policy that I never necessarily trust what I hear from man's mouth, especially if I don't know the quality of student that that individual might be. And even then, before I share it to warn somebody, I'm going to read it with my own little pinkies right from the manuscripts, or I'm not going to teach it. Did you hear what I said? Why? That is God's instruction, or you're liable to end up being a false, misleading teacher. And let me tell you something. If God dislikes one group of people, it's the false shepherds. Boy, does he dislike them. And the curses he brings down on false shepherds is probably some of the most severe burdens that are brought on people from God's word. So take it on yourself. You can only speak boldly, as Paul would say. That's being sure of yourself. All right? Do you know what boldly means? It doesn't mean necessarily loud, but it means to be straightforward. And people, when they hear you teach, they don't have to say, do you think you know what you're talking about? They know you know you have know what you're talking about because you speak with authority. That's what it means, boldly, bringing forth that word. When you hear it from God's word, then you can be sure of it, okay? Now, so what was Ezekiel done? He was made a watchman. For who? The house wine, for the which thou hast labored. Verse 9, but they that have gathered it shall eat it and, and praise the Lord, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Part of the married family. Verse 10, go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. You want to know what you're supposed to do? This is spoken in a parable, but you're sharp enough to grasp onto that. Cast up, cast up. Don't let, don't let it be in a swamp. Build up a roadbed. Gather out the stones. You're supposed to be able to, when you find a stone in the path that's going to cause someone to stump their toe, you're supposed to kick it out. Yeah, it may hurt your toe, but that's all right. You're one of God's troopers. And when you see a stone, root it out and push it off to the side of the road. That's what you're supposed to do. All right. I hope you understand the parable. Lift up a standard for the people. What is that standard? It's Jesus Christ. It's this word, the living word. You hold it up and let people know this is the easy way. This is the way to receive God's blessings. This is the standard that will bring you peace of mind. 
And the more you smooth that road, how do, do you, let's, let's put it right down where the rubber meets the road. You know what he's saying? The more you understand this word and are able to take some of the rough spots out of someone's life, that is to say trouble, to give them good advice, whereby it makes the trip a little easier for them, that's a blessing to you. And that causes God to love you very much. It brings truth and it brings peace of mind. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. When? Even to this generation, the end of this cosmos age, were earth age. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Christ is returning. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. His recompense. You're doing the work at, even at this time. Verse 12 to complete. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called sought out. That means called a city not forsaken. That's the ultimate. That's prophecy. And it's going to happen exactly as it's written. That's part of your duties as a watchman to know and to understand that. Part of your duty is to know where the dead are. So that when a neighbor or someone loses a loved one, you're able to say, don't worry, they're with the Father. And very soon shall they join us. It takes away the pain, the grief, not, not the missing and so forth. And the pain and loneliness even of missing that one. But knowing where they are helps a great deal. That's just one small, very small example of what a blessing you can be to others when you are a watchman for the living God. So, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what the Lord wants me to do. Well, when you say that to me, I know you have not been reading God's Word. Because he didn't say, I'm going to pick 13 good watchmen for all the people. No, he said, all are watchmen. So let me tell you something. Watch, watchmen, watch. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please?